we're going to be using Pencil from the Pencil Project, which is a free open source tool for prototyping and doing wireframes. A wireframe is a way of logically planning where components are going to go in your web page or your app or on a tablet, and they're very useful. Now, when you're doing your wireframe, it's important to remember that it's really intended as a placement tool. It's usually done all in grayscale except for links which are blue um, because it's like a blueprint on a house which will tell you where your kitchen is, where the window is, where the refrigerator is, how long the counters are, but typically won't tell you whether you're using the pine finish or the maple finish or what color you're painting the walls. We're not really getting into the colors here, we're just getting into placement of items on the page. So you can go to pencil.evolus.vn and you can download it and you can download it as a freestanding program or as a tool which you can drag into a web page and it will add to um, Firefox if you want to add it into here. So it can work either way. Now make sure you're saving frequently, especially before you go and try to publish it because if you don't it will shut and you'll lose everything that you did. Voice of experience here. So I'm going to start by creating a new page. And you want to do that the first time because you want it to be a normal web page size or a large web page size. Either one of these is fine. And then I'm going to typically do a background color, which I'm going to generally make black because it just shows where the page is. And then I'm going to put in my page title, which I will just call sample. And actually, I don't want it as a large web page. I think I'm going to do a normal web page. Okay, and then I'm going to start adding things to it. And I, you can use the common shapes, um, but it really doesn't have everything that you need. The one tool set that's going to have everything that you need is actually the sketchy GUI. This has everything you're going to need. And I usually start with a box, and I'm going to set the size here to 30 for the Y coordinate, 5 for the X, not 50, 5, um, and I like to make it 960 wide, and we'll say 700 long, Let's see how that does, we'll say 720. And so that's just the area that I'm going to have, this represents my page. I'm going to set the page color to medium gray. And this is just how I'm going to set up my div tags. So it's easy to see. And I'm going to use a real standard layout for div tags here. And again, I can go in here and I can set this up exactly the way that I want it. And put in the numbers, which I'm making it go all the way across. And I'm going to set it up to 120 in width. OK, so that's where my header will go. And then I'm usually going to put in a sidebar for my navigation if I choose to use that layout. Typically you're going to use a one, two, or three column layout with or without header and footer. So this would represent my navigation, local navigation on the side here. And when I translate this into a actual web page, typically you're not going to see this gray coming through behind it because usually it'll be like the same color. This is just helping me plan how big my div tags are going to be because I can actually go and grab how many pixels these are and plant in it to the pixel level, which is really nice. And then I would put in potentially a footer. Make that a bit smaller. Drop it in here. And this would be one very common layout. We'll set the X to 30 and that to 960 and make it go all the way across. And so there we have my standard header, left column, main area, footer layout. This is not the only layout that's available by any means, but it's a really common one. And then what I like to do is select the whole thing, and you can try and drag a box around it all. It's easy to miss parts, so Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac. And then block these backgrounds because I'm just going to add stuff on top of them. And then I'm going to start adding content. And I'll typically put in local navigation on the left hand side. 
and I will do some sort of site name up at the top and you can change the font and I know it's Comic Sans the bane of all good designers but it, since it's supposed to be a sketchy feel that's sort of why they use it and you keep going bigger if you don't like it you can change it to something else but this isn't really where we're picking the fonts I'm supposed to look sort of hand sketched and then I would put in my if I have a logo I'd represent that by going here you'll notice that if I were to resize it sizes change which is nice you might have a spot for people to log in and you would, you would add a button to that you could also do top level navigation up here didn't mean to do that Okay, easy to hit delete and pull it out. And you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard keyboard as well for moving things around. Now when you're doing these, this represents navigation, but you shouldn't leave them all saying button. You would say things like home products. Specials. About. Gizmos. Widgets. Thing a ma bob. All these nice, really technical terms. And then you can put representations of what your page would like look like. So maybe if it's a product page, you might have images. You notice I can just copy and paste Oops. a couple of them here. Too bad. So I might have a products page, and then I would typically separate these with lines. And I can copy and paste that. And then I would typically have, I can have a breadcrumb up here. They typically have labels. Get some one. And typically we can represent if we wanted to, this would be like an H1 tag, so it'd be a little bit bigger, possibly bold. So I have Gizmo 1, Gizmo 2, and Gizmo 3. That just represents the label. And then typically to represent text, we just draw thick lines because we don't want to worry about what it's saying. I'm going to make them relatively thick. And copy, paste, 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 paste. And I can represent paragraph text just like that. And usually it's better if the ends aren't completely even because typically paragraphs are left aligned. I 
And then if I wanted to reuse that, I could. Group it, copy it. And paste and paste. And there I go. I've got my paragraph on each product. And then I could put in a little bit of stuff down here in the bottom. Typically, I would have um, links down here that generally echo the one buttons up at the top as far as what content you'd have. And you should make this real content so to match home product specials about and you just double click and type home products specials and about and there you go i've got a basic wireframe done. At this point, I should save this. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop as sample. And then I could copy this by duplicating the page and changing various items on here to make it represent new pages. Now to export it, um, I don't recommend using the PDF. It, it's just, it's being a nightmare trying to get it to work. It wants a template that doesn't work and makes everything corrupt. Um, so don't do this. What you want to typically do is um, ping files and all pages. You could uncheck if you did, if you only wanted specific pages, you could uncheck specific ones. So we'll just do one of the sample pages. Hit next. Choose a destination. I'm going to browse. I'm going to drop it on my desktop. And I'm going to hit finish. And so it'll export it with these page names up here. So now if I go to my page, I should see sample right here. I have a nice picture of the wireframe that I did. And this is what you're going to hand in on Canvas.